Hey guys, Poverty Boy Customs here. This is my 2003 Bombardier Quest 650. I actually purchased this a couple days ago. So what we're going to do today is clean up these rear racks. As you can see, they're coated in uh, fine surface rust, scratches, and whatnot. So what we're going to do is uh, refinish these and hopefully get them looking like brand new. Before we start on the uh, back racks, I'll just show you the uh, front racks that I've already done. So this was scuffed up, any rust areas were sanded right down to bare metal, and then it was given a couple coats of bed liner spray, and I'll show you which one I used here in a minute. But you can see these look brand new. They're a textured finish, and they're flat black. And I'm noticing on a lot of newer ATVs, this is the finish that they're going with. So instead of having rusty old scratched up bumpers, they look brand new and it's quite cheap to do and I'll show you how to do it. So before we get started, like anything, we're going to have a quick sip of coffee. And then we'll be raring to go here. So what I'm going to be using is what's called an easy liner bed liner spray. This is actually used to uh, touch up uh, bed liners that have been already sprayed on into uh, pickup trucks and whatnot. You can actually get this from Canadian Tire, and I believe it's $10.99 a can plus tax. And so I did the front racks and front bumper with this one, and I used probably three quarters of a can. And you can see this is quite messy. So when you're using it, make sure you're wearing gloves. This is next to impossible to get off your hands and make sure everything's covered up nice because it's hard to get off a plastic once it's on. So what you want to do first is we want to get rid of all of this uh, rust. We want to smooth down the edges just so you don't see it. Now this uh, bed liner spray is quite forgiving, but what I'm going to be using today, I just have a couple of sandy discs kicking around. So this is a 60 grit and then we'll finish with a 220 grit. So you just want to go through and sand down all these spots. So what I'm going to end up doing is the whole back rack and the rear bumper. So instead of watching me do that for 20 minutes, we're going to put her in fast forward here in a second. Not good, big thumbs down. So while I'm doing the uh, sanding, I'm also going to uh, spray the passenger uh, footrest. So we're gonna sand down this, the foot pegs. As you can see, they're getting all corroded. And we're also gonna clean uh, and paint the uh, floorboards. So you have the plastic ones and you have the metal ones, so we're gonna clean those up and uh, spray those while we got it out areas with the 60 grit sandpaper so what you need to do next is scuff up all the uh, the rest of the paint you want to make sure there's no grease wax or even a shiny paint on it it doesn't adhere to it very well so I'm going to use a 220 and we're going to scuff up the uh, rest of the uh, paint So all the paint has been scuffed up. Now remember the uh, two stickers here. This is super smooth. I want to show you how forgiving this stuff is. And once we're done, we'll take a look at this area right here. And we'll see if you can even notice where these stickers used to be at. And it's not sticky at all. There's no ridges or anything on it. So just keep an eye on that area. Before we cover everything off that we don't want painted, and before we paint the uh, racks and bumper, we want to make sure there's no dust and grease on it. So you want to use a tack cloth with some paint thinner or whatever you have from your automotive store. And we want to wipe all this down. And it will uh, make sure the uh, paint adheres to it a lot better. You can see how much stuff actually comes off this. So I'm going to do the whole bike for the racks and uh, 
then we'll get taping off. All right, so I have the four wheeler all taped off with uh, plastic. Shout out to my neighbor for allowing me to uh, borrow the uh, bags that you'll uh, find out once you watch this video. So everything's been taped off. So make sure anything that you don't want sprayed is uh, taped off. And when I'm spraying down by the uh, rear tires, I'll make sure they're covered up too. Paint always has a uh, weird way of finding those little tiny cracks and uh, getting through. So it looks to be taped off good. And I'll just do one quick check again, just to make sure where the bags overlap, that there's no way of the paint going in underneath them. And I'll just be using this one that I was using yesterday. Make sure it's shaked up really well. If it isn't, you'll find it doesn't spray evenly. So I'm gonna shake this up really well and then I'm gonna spray it into a box just to make sure it's not com coming out in clumps. I find that these tips have a way of clogging up quite quickly. So every once in a while, you'll take your can when you're painting, you'll go to your box, take it upside down and spray it so nothing's coming out the end and that clears out the uh, nozzle. So I'm gonna give this a good shake for probably a minute or so, and then we'll start painting. And just make sure when you're painting to have a set of uh, gloves on, because this is hard to come off on the hands. So the uh, bed liner spray's uh, shooken up really well. Uh, again, make sure you have gloves on. You can get a hundred pack of these on Amazon for like 10 bucks. They're well worth it. So we're gonna give it a spray in the box and we're gonna see how evenly it comes out. So that's coming out nice and even. You'll notice if it's not, it will start clumping up. So we'll get spraying. So we're all done spraying. So I ended up using about another three quarters of a can. Now, just one thing, this does drip a lot on the ground. So make sure you're not painting it on a nice surface. This garage here, I couldn't care less about as far as uh, marks on the ground, so it's fine. So let's take a look at it. So far, looks really nice. Now, while I was doing the uh, spraying part of the video you'll notice every once in a while it's actually touching the surface so if you ever got a bubble on it it's very forgiving so you can actually take your finger and just uh, rub out the bubble and it almost blends in you don't really notice it after there's the back I'm gonna worry about redoing all this suspension paint and uh, and whatnot a little bit later there's the uh, Passenger pegs leading down to the metal part of the footrest. So this paint to uh, fully cure, they say it takes about three hours, but all the paint that's on the plastic is pretty much dry, so I can start removing the uh, plastic. And hopefully we're not gonna have a whole ton of uh, overspray. All right, so let's take a look at it. 
Now I was just checking a little bit for overspray. I don't see any. There's a little bit of dust on the plastic, but that's from sanding, as you can see. I remember how all these were corroded and assuming that's aluminum. So I sprayed that too. Now it has a nice textured surface, but not overly. That's the right side. I'm gonna paint, take those off and paint those and the uh, rear brake. I'm just gonna paint those with a spray paint instead of with the uh, bed liner. Again, overall it looked horrible at the beginning. Now it looks great. Remember what I was talking about with the area where the stickers were at? You don't know that they were there. Repainted that bar. I'm going to repaint there. And the rear axle differential and whatnot a little bit later. But I'm quite pleased with it. Again, this little project here probably cost $25 to do the front and rear racks. And there's the front rack well I hope you found the uh, video helpful again this was a low budget restoration of the racks I could have taken them off however I was able to get most of the spots that I wanted to get uh, some people actually removed them which may be a little bit quicker depending on how many nuts and bolts you need to take off to get it off. However, I'm pretty pleased with uh, the outcome here. If you hopefully found this video helpful, I went on a little bit too long on it, but I wanted to show all the detailed steps on how to do it. Again, if you're selling an ATV for the little expense and a little bit of time that this actually took, it's well worth it. The uh, potential buyer, when they go to look at it, they're not seeing rusty old racks. As their first impression the first impression is going to be that it looks like somebody actually took care of it so it's a little bit of work but well worth it in the uh, long run if you're uh, planning on selling it or again planning on keeping it this gives a nice uh, surface again it hasn't been 15 minutes since the last time I put the uh, coat on I probably put about three or four light coats on and it's uh, dry to the touch however it's not fully cured so remember to uh, like, comment, and subscribe to uh, the video and the channel, and I'll be doing a lot more updated videos on this. The next one's probably going to be on how to change the oil in this, and uh, we'll grease it and check all the uh, front and rear differential fluid. Thanks for watching. Take care.